maybe tailgate of the truck with an F-town beer, sitting on Ooh, a yeah, uh, woolen like mills, that. sitting on a woolen mills blanket, maybe. Yeah. Eating some uh, eating some cheesecake product. I uh, like that. I think this sounds like a pretty good idea. We got to come up with a jingle that incorporates all of that. We should. We should Listening look at our musical expertise on the table here soon. Listening to KDHL as we go down Central Avenue yeah. with F Town Brew. I think so. We have to get a special event license, I suppose, to have F Town on the tailgate while the vehicle's moving. I get a terrible woolen mill blanket for my sweetheart. Nice. A packer robe woolen mill blanket. <laughs> Back there, they're making those packer robes again. Do you remember I know. those bad boys? Yes, the stadium. It was for stadiums, right? Right. Stadium blanket, and they uh, they fold it up, went in a case. Yeah, so you had your uh, brought it in your fanny game. pad, you know, and then when it got chilly later in the game, you just pulled the blanket out and wrapped up. It's pretty nice. This is back long before they searched everybody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know if you could sneak in at the. Well, I can imagine what all was snuck in inside those packer robes. Oh gosh, yes, yeah, a little bit. You know, <laughs> some uh, schnapps, and <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. That was common. The, the Vikings games wasn't that. I mean, pretty much didn't everybody at the old Met Stadium bring in uh, a little antifreeze? Yeah, we chilly to, outside. Uh, some friends and I used to always go to the Gopher Iowa football game at Memorial Old Memorial Stadium. Okay, that shows you how old I am. Yeah. And we'd sneak in a little bottle or something, you know. Very nice. My Back last day. my last game I went to at the Met Stadium was the last game at the Met Stadium. Oh, cool. Yeah, the uh, interesting thing, I'd been there for a few games before this. I was, I was a kid. This was like 81 or 82. But, uh, and everybody was always had their little bottles they were nipping from, like we talked about. Well, at this game, rather than just disappearing into their coats to have a little sip, these <laughs> folks were disappearing actually down under their seats. And what's going on? Well, as it turned out, they, w they had brought their little socket sets, and they were detaching their seats from the oh, concrete. So when the game them. was over, they turned around and stood up and hauled their chairs right out of the stadium. Wow. <laughs> that old Med Stadium. That was a while ago. Huh? Yeah, we're getting older, Nort. In a good way. I think it's a good, good time to be this age, don't you? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I don't think I'd want to grow up with the, the things that they got to grow up with these days. We grew up in a good time. I, I agree. I agree. So we're here to talk about a fall festival that's coming up in Faribault. Extraordinary. You've made some improvements yeah, to it. We've got an energized fall festival this year. It's been a good, good event um, uh, for, for quite a few years in town, and it's, it's a downtown event. We are this year adding, well, we haven't added it. I'll say F-Town has added. A, uh, a family day event with uh, bands, yard games, and it's an, it's an outdoor thing in the parking lot next to F-Town. So it's the uh, grand opening and Oktoberfest event, and we're combining our fall festival with that. So. Oh, okay. So F-Town Brews having a grand opening. With Oktoberfest, and we're uh, running that in conjunction with the uh, fall festival sponsored by Main Street. When's this? This is October 3rd, so... Not that far off. Not too far off. Got, a, got about three weeks left, I guess, three and a half weeks, so... Um, and there's some fun pieces for that. I'll be happy to fill you in. Yeah, well, that's a great teaser in the first segment of the show. We picked up some economic impact Department of Tourism numbers from the Explore Minnesota website we want to talk to Nord a little bit about because a report came out yesterday that did a survey a summer 2015 survey that showed some strong travel growth. So we want to touch on that with Nort and see if we're reaping some of those benefits here locally with our 23 lakes. It sounds, yeah. sounds, like, good. It sounds like a good conversation for us to so have. So we'll, we'll touch on that too with Nort, I promise, when the AM Minnesota continues. Uh, Lewis, he's the Director of Community Marketing for the City of Faribault. Did I get that title right? You did. Thank you for that. It encompasses quite a few things. Yes, it does. Makes Maybe. it accurate. And it means you're in charge of Main Street, too. I, well, I, I'm ah, privileged to work program. with Main Street and, and help coordinate some things. We've got just a, an amazing uh, host of volunteers that uh, they, they do the heavy lifting on. Yeah, I shouldn't say in charge of. You help coordinate it. There you go. 
<laughs> but Fall Festival is coming up October, the first weekend in October. October 3rd, and it's uh, the, the quick rundown of the event. It uh, starts at noon, and it's kicking off with a parade. At, at this time, um, uh, we have a few commitments yet to come in, so we're hoping for a couple of special deals with that. I hate to say they're going to be there or not, so I'll just say we have the potential for a couple of special lead-offs for the parade. It's a costume parade? Costume and bicycle parade. We've got the uh, some of those bike enthusiasts in Faribault are helping us uh, to coordinate that part of it. We'll include a bike corral downtown, so after the parade, when the kids can do their downtown trick-or-treating this year, um, and also partake in kids' games, there will be a scary basement tour at the Paradise Center for the Arts. I'm, I'm not sure what all they have down in that basement. It can get pretty dark down there, I would assume. I, I would think so. I no. mean, that the place has been around a long time. Yeah. A long, long time. So I suspect, uh, you know, maybe it is mildly haunted. <laughs> or at least it'll have the perception that it's mildly yeah. haunted, I think, on October 3rd. Um, those, those will start after the parade. Parade will be probably 30 minutes, give or take. We'll give the kids a chance to park their bicycles um, and then join for the trick-or-treating and the, the scary basement tours. There'll be pumpkin painting again this year. Um, um, that's expected to be on the block right in front of the Paradise Theater. And the famous chili contest returns. Oh, my. So uh, we're looking still for, uh, for entrance for that, and that will be spread up and down um, Central Avenue. We'll set up, for example, we'll have two or three in front of Flair Furniture, we'll have two or three in front of other businesses um, up and down Central Avenue for this. So you can move along, visit businesses, uh, try some chili. You'll want to get a little walk-in, I think, between trying, between tastings. Um, I think we had 15 to 20 different uh, contestants last year for the event. I expect we'll have that many this year. And you have different categories, the super hot versus the mild, or is it all it's, one big it's, happy it's all chili? Falling. One big happy chili. I would, I, I'll hope and I'll encourage our vendors that have the super hot to label it as such, because that's a bad surprise. Yeah. <laughs> I start watering and the tears fall. What's with the ghost peppers in this? I was not prepared. <laughs> because then, then I guess you could run down to F Town quick and get that taken care of. Oh, of course. We'll, when, I, we'll have water available on Main Street, and some of the other vendors will, will have their doors open for things too. So, um, so yeah, it's lots of things for the kids to do. Those items will wrap up around five. Uh, the uh, the bands and yard games at F Town, their portion of the event. Those are going to go on till um, I, it's either 10 or 11 p.m. Pretty sure it's 11 p.m. And um, it'd be a, be a nice time uh, for everybody in downtown Fairville on October 3rd. So the business is downtown, or they have their dining festival deals. They are, and you know, uh, we're we're signing them up right now to be involved with uh, the trick or treating. What we're doing is we're encouraging the kids to bring an adult with them. Uh, parent, guardian, older sibling, um, whatever that may look like. And as they do their trick-or-treating, we're also encouraging those participating businesses who will have a balloon hung on their doorknob or on those little sacks of sand out in front of the business so you know um, who's participating. Uh, some of them will have some deals for the adults as well. So uh, as the kids can trick-or-treat and and get a little something in their bag to warm them up for Halloween. The adults will be able to um, partake in some deals as well. Well, it's good that you're doing it in the first weekend of October because you could have lots of snow by the end of October. Well, oh, that's you happened. Remember the Halloween snowstorm. Oh, I do remember that. Um, that was that was uh, what's it, about 30 inches we got in an evening. There's a lot of snow. We had a lot of snow. I was around for that. I was around for that. <laughs> it was 91, wasn't it? I think so. Think so. Yep, 91. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we can live without that for now. Yeah, we, live without that for we now. don't need that. But October 3rd, the chances are the weather's going to be pretty good. I think it'll be nice. I'm hoping it'll be wonderful. For sure, the events will be wonderful. Just starting, Rain or shine. Just starting, Nord. I notice I live on 7th Street. Okay. And there are a lot of maples on 7th Street. 
just starting to see the colors change. Just on the edges. Yeah. Isn't it something? I was, uh, was at the Nature Center yesterday, um, visiting my friend Ben Van Gundy down there, and, and we uh, did a little tour around the center, and it's just gorgeous out there right now. You know, they've got 10 miles of trails. Um, it's walking, bicycling in the winter, it's snowshoeing, cross-country skiing. What a facility for Fairville to have. It's a gem. There's no question. We'll work hard um, to make sure we're getting that word out so that those uh, people that come to town find that nature center, that beautiful river bend. And, and many do now, don't get me wrong. Right. Um, it's one of my favorite places. It is. I want to go do some thinking. That's where I go. There you go. Nice. Nice, nice. So, the uh, I, I guess some of the other things we could hit up, and I'll, I can just pull up. Since we're on downtown right now, we can hit up tourism in a little bit. But look at this. Nord's well, got his phone. I got He's my gonna pull it up on his phone. Yeah, this is the uh, visitfairwell.com, which is mobile friendly, and on the event side of things, right underneath will pop up. We've got well, taste of Fairwell, 17th. Yeah, Barb's coming on Friday to give us details about that. Nice. Hit the button, slide over. September 18th through 20th, 24th and 26th. Don't drink the water at the Paradise Center for the Arts. Fairville Woolen Mill Tent Sale, September 25th, 26th. And then Fall Festival on Oktoberfest, October 3rd. Sliding right on over. Tribute Fest, a tribute to the King, October 10th. Paradise. Fine. The tribute to the King must be an Elvis Presley. It is. It's an image of Elvis. It's got to be Elvis. I don't know that it's him. It is a tribute. He's in the building. <laughs> so what else is shaking? I uh, I did want to, I had to bring this up. I giggled so hard listening to you um, at a baseball game recently talking uh, about a fella next to you that had a camera. And you said, look at that thing. That camera's worth more than my car. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, that was up at the state. Yeah, that's what the state baseball, baseball tournament. Oh, you should have seen the lens on this camera. Holy moly! That was uh, wow. That was just you, know, you do a good job, by the way. Oh well, thank you. you know, catch on a lot of things, but that, that just made me giggle. I was working on a working on a home project. Couldn't be at the game that day, but just giggle. That's a it's a lot of fun. We enjoy doing that. The state amateur baseball tournament. You know, that's a tourism event. Absolutely. And I know Fairbo would love to get it back here. It hasn't been here since what the fifties. 70s? It was it was here in the 70s. It was I worked. In the 70s. At, I actually worked at that tournament as a kid, uh, uh, helping break the infield between games. So that, that was uh, that would have been in the 70s. So yeah, fantastic tourism event. Uh, those are um, tourism, is, as if you would describe it as economic development, which it, it kind of is. In fact, if you look at one of the pure definitions of economic development, it's bringing money from outside your community, having people drop it off here, spend it here or create product that brings money into the community. And tourism, I mean, it's precisely that. Get people to come to town, spend some time, and spend some uh, spend some dollars boosting up the local economy. Once they're spent here, the nice thing about Fairville, we're, we're so locally owned. I mean, just made in Fairville. It's, it's, it's got quite a ring to it, and it's quite true. So those dollars that are brought to town and spent at our at our one-off restaurants without franchise fees, for example, those dollars stay around. Um, the same thing with uh, with the, the shopping at our uh, local stores, etc. So, yep. tourism as economic development, it's a it's a true topic and a good one. I was asking the folks when I was in Watkins about what sort of capital they had to invest. They said, "Well, if you're going to host this tournament, you better have a quarter million dollars in the bank." You know, I suppose in 2015, 2016 dollars, that's, that's probably about right. But then look at what it brings in. Yeah, it's that's the other thing. Well well worth the investment. It's not quite like the Olympics. No. no of course <laughs> not. We don't have to build dormitories and fields and ski slopes and new pools, etc. But, but they uh, need to upgrade the, the fields. In fact, on the Minnesota Baseball Association website, you can see improvements they're making in the Hutchinson and the Dasso Cocado, that's who's hosting it next year. Okay, They're very Literally good. rebuilding the whole stands at one of those sites. Wow. Wow, wow. 
Well, tourism is uh, is certainly important, and there's uh, quite a bit going on right now with our tourism commission as we are researching and fine-tuning our messaging. Uh, what's the best of, of our many products that we have in Fairhall? You can only show so many of them effectively. You know, if you you put a big collage with all kinds of images and messages up there. Somebody reviewing that, either online or in print, they tend to slide by it. But if you can get some big, compelling images up there with a clear call to action, uh, that's typically a better, uh, better route. And the Tourism Commission uh, right now is in the process uh, with us uh, discovering where our best place to market is right now, who our best target audience is, and then defining what of our many product offerings will cause the best reaction from somebody seeing our advertising and marketing. And um, I'm looking forward to a really cool, a super cool campaign for 2016. Um, 2015 was good. We had some good bold sweeping images and, and this was before I got here. They had put together, a, I think, a, a pretty effective plan of purchasing, um, advertising, and conducting marketing did a decent job. In fact, I can share with you that Fairbolt is indeed recognizing uh, a little bit of the increase in tourism spending. Um, I just added up our uh, report numbers yesterday and uh, we're at a 2% increase through July um, for Fairbolt lodging revenues. So. That's a positive note. What have you What have you got there in that handy dandy state download? Well, the state has all kinds of information on their website, as you're very well aware. They came up with a summer 2015 survey that showed strong Minnesota travel growth. You don't have percentages listed here. This was a okay. survey of campgrounds, bed and breakfasts, resorts, that oh, sort of thing. Good. Fifty-one percent of the respondents reported that their occupancy was up in 2015, the summer, which is June through August. Your numbers are through July. Correct. We're January through July. So they could be higher than 2% if you add August in. You know what I'm saying? I've heard we had a pretty good pretty good August. I was talking to a and b owner yesterday and and uh, she's had a she's had a pretty good pretty good just the last few days even with uh, you know people staying and nights when she wouldn't have expected to have you know four rooms filled up but did so um, that's probably indicative of the rest of them. We'll know soon when we get the August numbers in. So 51% of the respondents reported summer 2015 occupancy up. 28% said it was the same. Okay. 22% reported it was down from last year. For revenue, 62% said that the revenue was up. 21% reported the same. 17% said it was down compared to last year. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Huh. But uh, another thing that's interesting, when you go on their website, the industry numbers, sales tax numbers, private sector employment, gross sales tax, you know, impact in the economy kind of numbers. Data. Newest information is from 2013. That's that's a little bit of a surprise. I'm, I'm going to check that out a little this bit. This is a January 2015 report. Right. And it's from 2013. You know, I'm going to check on that for you. Well, that's right. Uh, I, I talked with, uh, talk with Explore this Minnesota Tourism this morning, and um, actually I'll be in in Worthington next week for a regional. That's where I was born. Wow. They won't let me back in that town. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I started my college career in Worthington. It's the turkey capital of the world, you know. It is. They have the original turkey trot there. <laughs> and that's quite an event, as I understand <laughs> it. It's, it's a gig. At least it was... Uh, it was back in the early 80s. When Speaking I was of that, how did the sheep races go? Oh, that was just a scream. I should. I, I haven't. Uh, I guess I haven't looked for a video, but there's got to be one out there. A few people were uh, videoing the thing, but yeah, that was just an absolute hoot down at the Woolen Mills uh, 150th celebration. There were several of us. I I was very privileged to be able to jump in. And run with the sheep. Oh, okay, that was and was a running of the sheep, not races, but running with the sheep. The run, the running of the sheep. It was, you know, just kind of a spoof off the uh, the event in Spain where they had, uh, where they run with the bulls, of course. But yeah, it was it was just a hoot. People were just cheering, and uh, and what a good time, and what a clever event. 
for them to put together much better than a bowl you don't have to worry about being gored you know yeah you know to shoot pretty puffy i guess if you fell on one it would be kind of like falling on a pillow or a blanket right so and if they fell on you i suppose it'd be similar so but it was quite the hoot huh it really was it really was and again what a clever event those are uh those are some pretty sharp cookies that we've got down there working that uh that revitalized and re-energized Woolen Mill and Faribault. And the anniversary was a big success? It was, you know, and they had music, they had um, all kinds of food vendors, they had a special program honoring, um, they, they started up the Woolen Mill Hall of Fame now, and several uh, past executives and, uh, and uh, some current um, employees inducted into that Hall of Fame. We had um, R.T. Ryback was there, we had our famous mayor, John Jasinski was there for, uh, for a speech. Um, a real good event. We had an information booth set up. Um, we knew we'd have a fair number of out-of-town visitors at this event. And that, that definitely held true. Uh, it's, uh, I personally talked to, and I'm, I'm not exaggerating, I personally talked to probably close to 300 people and uh, was able to ask the question, how'd you hear about this? And it was a wide range of things. Some of it was, uh, was the uh, public relations uh, and the work that was done by the Woolen Mill. They did a great job getting stories on um, uh, several news outlets, both in print and uh, and TV media. A lot of people picked up on that, found out about the Woolen Mill and the event. Um, uh, tourism, understanding this to be a tourism event, we uh, spent some of our marketing dollars buying some TV advertising and some print advertising, and uh, we had a number of folks who had reacted to that and made their way over to Faribault for the event. And uh, what was extra fun was to be able to have conducted that advertising, uh, purchasing some of that TV advertising, and have those folks come to our information tent and be able to personally tell them, you know, there's a lot more in Faribault. Here's a guide. And here are the other places you can go, the River Bend. Here's a variety of, of one-off restaurants that we have in town. Um, we've got the largest historic district in the state, outside St. Paul in town, and, uh, and several other things. Here, go enjoy. So that was a real good event. I'm, I'm hoping that they'll have a, a repeat for next year. Again, North Johnson is with us. He's with the Faribault Chamber and the Economic Impact by County of the leisure and hospitality industry for 2013. I think we went over this the first time you were on the yeah, airways. We did a few this. months ago. In Rice County, we're third in the southeast, in the southern Minnesota region. And I just note, we're ahead of Winona County with the Mississippi River. Right. We're ahead of Wabasha County with the Eagle Center. Right. Ahead of, uh, well, Goodyear County and Wabasha County, of, you know, Lake Pepin, Lake City already in it. Right. So we're ahead of some areas you would think would have some pretty good tourism. We're ahead of Steele County, which a lot of people like to compare Rice County to Steele County, Faribault versus right. Oatana, by a good margin. We're talking uh, almost triple right. gross sales. Rice County's third, Olmstead's first. They're kind of the elephant in the you know room right. kind of thing because they're so much bigger than we are. But remember, this is. Hospitality. I don't know how much of that is necessarily tourism as opposed to the Mayo Clinic. Much of it is business visitors. related, of course. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And Blue Earth County is not ahead of us by a lot, but they're quite a bit bigger they than us, a, aren't they? I, I think they've got quite a few more square miles. So, yeah. So I think that's a very positive, positive thing when you look at those numbers. I agree. 151 million, roughly. That's, that's, uh, that's substantial. Um, that's, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons that we have uh, a tourism tax in place so that um, how that works is the, the hotels collect a, a, a percent from every visitor that stays with the hotels. Those are the gross sales. The sales tax numbers for Rice County were six and a half million. That's full sales tax. That does not include the tourism tax. The difference is the tourism tax, the sales tax is used for um, other purposes. The, uh, the tourism tax or lodging tax is collected, and it's, again, it's a small percentage of every stay, um, by the hotels from the visitors, and it's turned over to the city, who by law um, has to spend that on marketing, um, and that's through a contract with a, 
with an agency and that's usually your local tourism or function of the chamber or convention and visitors bureau so the local logic tax stays local you're saying correct so these sales tax numbers are just the state correct you got it you got it so the local lodging tax then by law is spent marketing your community so that you can ensure that we're doing our very best to get our share of that tourism pie and as you can see and you just discussed it's a pretty substantial pie so we want to do our best to have those people come and visit Faribault stay in Faribault and enjoy their time here and send others back the three that I mentioned the top three in southern Minnesota are the only three counties with over a hundred million dollars in gross sales nice private sector employment for Rice County this obviously is more than just Faribault it includes Northfield and Lonsdale and you know all of right 2307 people employed in the leisure and hospitality industry that's something we think about that that's you know restaurants hotels resorts B&B's different attractions and I think they probably include some retail that's specific to visitation as well that's more than the size of Kenyon just to put that observation yeah imagine if all of Kenya every person there were the ones that were working in the visitation and tourism industry 2307 people have jobs because of of the leisure and hospitality industry so it's a big deal here in Rice County and in Faribault specifically it is it is and it's a good business to be in it really is if you are if you consider that the work you're doing when you're working in leisure and hospitality we run out of time we're out of time well we'll let time go thanks Norton hey we'll catch up again soon thank you so much you're in tune to KDHL